Kia ora, my name is Ben Goodwin. Welcome along to the uh, Wedapunga Portacom here at the Auckland Zoo. Um, I'm a keeper here on the ectotherm department. I've been working here for about 11 years now um, and I want to show you a bit about what I do. Um, this is where we keep and breed all of our Wedapunga. So um, you had a question about being overrun with giant Weta. Well, um, we certainly have a lot in here, but that's exactly what we want. So we want to be breeding as many as possible so that we've got lots and lots to release onto these offshore islands. So at the moment we've got about 600 in here, which is actually quite easy for us at the moment. Um, so this room actually has a maximum capacity of about 1,000. So plenty of room to go around, so at the moment we're not quite at capacity. So um, we've got them all here in these setups. So um, if you look inside, you can see there's lots and lots of hiding places. So this is a nocturnal insect that spends most of the day tucked up into dense foliage, like these tree fern fronds here. Um, so lots of hiding places for them. Um, and you see they've got some food in here as well. So um, they feed mainly on vegetation. So these are just some native plants which they eat. And then uh, they also eat dead leaf litter from uh, the forest floor. So we've got that here on the bottom of the uh, enclosure. And then um, they also have quite a high requirement for protein as well. So uh, we feed them a little bit of fish food and that keeps them happy. So this is a Wedapunga. This is the largest insect in New Zealand. It's amongst the heaviest insects in the world. Um, it's endemic to New Zealand, so only found here. And um, it's one of our, I think anyway, one of our most iconic uh, insect species that we have here. So the Wetapunga is part of this group of giant wetters, of which there are 11 species, scattered right about the country. And uh, this one is the largest of all of them. This project hit, uh, here started in the early 2000s and we got involved in 2012. And it's uh, essentially a project to restore the species to other islands in the Hauraki Gulf. So formerly it had a very, very wide distribution from uh, Auckland right through to Northland. Um, but uh, subsequently, because of the introduction of predators, uh, especially rats, um, it's declined massively throughout its range. It's now restricted to only one offshore island, and we're trying to, or well, we are, restoring the species back to places where it would have been found in the past. It's really important that we establish new populations of it on other offshore islands, just in case something happens to that, um, that only population of theirs. We first got involved in the project here in 2012, and uh, we collected 12 animals from Te Aotearoa Otoi, Little Barrier Island. We brought them back into captivity here and um, we maintained them here. They bred for us and they produced a lot of eggs, a lot more than we were actually expecting. Um, in 2013, the first juveniles hatched and we started rearing them from there. And um, we experimented with different types of enclosures, so what ones they prefer and which ones they do best in and these are the ones that we settled on. Everyone here gets um, serviced three times a week, so what that involves is coming through, uh, replacing all this foliage, so we'll take out these bits of brows, we call it, and we've got to be really careful to check that no one's hiding in amongst the leaves, because these weta in here are very, very small. So we take that out, check it all, and then it goes down there. Then we take the old food dish out, Again, checking here just to make sure no one's tucked away in there. So that comes out. Then a little clean up of any poo on the ground if it needs to be done. So that comes out. And then uh, we replace everything. So brand new foliage goes in and then we give them a little spray and that's it done. Move on to the next enclosure and we repeat that about 70 times. Now that we've got the sort of standard system for rearing them, um, we've been able to really bump up our production of them. With insects, you need to have large numbers of animals released into the wild, and that's because um, insects have quite high predation pressure. Lots of things want to eat them, so we have to accept that not all of the animals that get released to the wild will get a chance to grow up and breed for themselves. So we've got to make sure that plenty more go in than actually are needed to establish that population. So that's pretty much how these projects work. Um, and since we began the project in uh, 2012, we've released uh, just over 6,000 animals back to the wild on five different islands. So there's now six populations of Wedapunga, where only a decade ago there was only one. So that's pretty cool. 
It depends a little bit on how you look at it. So if you go and look through the fossil record, um, you'll look, have a look through all these different fossils and you'll see that there are some insects which look very, very much like these giant wetter. So that just shows that this body shape, the classic wetabunga or other wetter body shape, is a very successful one and so it hasn't had to change very much over the last however many millions of years. Um, so thanks for coming and having a little look into my world here today and I hope to see you uh, back at the zoo again soon.